Hey everybody, it's Jim with Signs of Honor. I want to start this video off by thanking everybody for helping us share Marine Corporal Riley Baker's story. We were really overwhelmed with the response and everybody that reached out to us, so thank you very much. We're off to film our next Signs of Honor. We're going to sit down with Julie Vintage, who is the mother of Marine Lance Corporal Philip Vintage, who was killed in action October 13, 2010. Uh, we're honored that Julie's going to sit down with us and share a little bit about Philip's life. This one hits close to home for a couple reasons. This is the first one I filmed since we lost Corey just a little bit over a year ago. I often think, what would he want me to do? And I'm positive he'd want me to carry on with the mission, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, Philip also grew up just a couple miles from where Corey and I grew up. He went to the Francis House School District, and Corey and I are both alumni of the Francis House School District, so this one's really special to me. You can see Phillips Heroes Way sign in Cottleville, Missouri off Highway N, right outside the fire department there. So go by and check it out. We're getting close to the vintage house. We're honored that Julie's gonna sit down with us and share a little bit about her son. So everybody help us share Phillips' story. Um, we appreciate you and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Hi, Julie. Hi there. How are Welcome. you? Thank Come you. In. Appreciate it. Thank you. Philip was our third son, and we had a fairly easy labor with the two older ones. We were thinking it was going to be fairly quick with him. Um, I actually had a doctor's appointment and went to it, and the doctor said, well, you need to be going to the hospital because today's probably your day. And when I got to the hospital, it was mid-afternoon. Come to find out, Philip had been kind of an acrobat, and there were two knots in the umbilical cord and the doctor came in and said, okay, we're gonna have to do an emergency C-section. And I guess Philip decided that wasn't a good idea, but he was born naturally. It was scary for a little while, right after Philip was born, because the cord was actually around his neck. So when there'd be a contraction, it would cut off his oxygen supply. So he got to go to intensive care for just a little while and then everything was just fine and dandy. He and I would actually sit and rock and I would talk to him and just tell him what kind of a blessing he was. Philip had a lot of personality. He always wanted to try to keep up with his brothers. Philip would have been three and a half and both of his older brothers had gone to the emergency room and had stitches a few times and Philip hadn't had stitches yet. While well, Philip bribed a neighbor boy to throw a rock at him at his forehead to crack his forehead open so he could go get stitches like his two older brothers. Philip comes walking in from outside, has this great big knot on his forehead and blood gushing out of it. And so I grab him and off to the emergency room we go. And I get there and the doctor came in and told me that he thought he could just put a butterfly band-aid on it and send us home. And I looked at Philip and it was like someone had just crushed him. And I told the doctor, I said, please no, can you at least put a stitch in? Otherwise, I'm gonna be back to the emergency room every week until he really does do some damage. Philip was a very happy kid. I don't know if it was because he was the third, but he always seemed to be kind of the peacemaker. Two of his best buddies all through elementary school, middle school, and high school would even say that a lot of times they would get in fights and Philip was always the peacemaker. They would also say that they could never remember getting in a fight with Philip because Philip didn't fight back. It wasn't fun to fight with him because he never got mad at him, he never yelled at him, and that was that was very true of Phil. At his funeral and his visitation, it surprised us how many people came up to us and said that Philip always made them feel like they were his best friend. He would do little acts of kindness to them that, that they just said he always made them feel special. 
Philip was involved in wrestling. He got involved in middle school, but then he continued it once he got to high school. He was not a fun kid to wrestle because Philip was 6'4", and so he had very, very long legs. So it was hard to get a hold of him, but he had endurance. That kid could go on and on. He wasn't extremely fast or extremely strong, but his endurance, he could just go forever. His dad, Dave, would get so frustrated because Philip also had a very long reach. And Philip would put his hand on Dave's forehead and just tap his cheek. Well, his reach was longer than Dave and Dave couldn't do anything about it. Well, when you're a 16 year old kid, and he wouldn't do it to hurt, it was just he could annoy the crud out of Dave. Just Philip never wanted recognition. He never achieved his Eagle Scout. He accomplished everything, but he said he didn't need the title of an Eagle Scout to know that he did it. So he went and did everything and accomplished it, but he didn't need the Eagle Scout. He didn't need to be recognized for things. Because Philip was involved in extracurricular activities, we didn't encourage him to work when he was in high school. But he chose to be, at first, the Easter Bunny at the malls. Then he was taking pictures. But if you see a 6'4", 150-pound Easter Bunny, he's kind of scary. So then he went to, at Easter and at Christmas, he took pictures of the kids at the mall visiting the Easter Bunny in Santa Claus. And one day he asked me if I'd bring him dinner out. And so I showed up and here's Philip sitting cross-legged on the floor talking to this little kid that's freaking out getting on Santa's lap. And he's pulling toys out of his pocket to give to this little kid. I was amazed because all of a sudden this child wasn't scared anymore. Well, when we got Philip's personal belongings back from Afghanistan, there was a whole bag of super bouncy balls. What we found out is right before they were deployed, Philip had gone to a dollar store and bought a whole bunch of toys that he took to Afghanistan with him so he could give those toys to the Afghanistan kids. And we're like, who are you? Because it, it just surprised us that he would do that. Philip decided to join the Marine Corps on 9-11. He was only 10 years old when the attack was brought on us. I remember going into his bedroom. I would say he was sad, and for him that was unusual. And we got to talking to him, Dave and I did, and he said that he wanted to go into the military because he wanted to get the bad guy. He didn't want to ever be scared again. Well, a 10-year-old, you think, okay, next week you're going to fireman or who knows what you'll want to be. But Philip never, never wavered from that. Philip turned 15 in high school and he started training with the Marine recruits. I still was holding out that, oh, this is just a phase. But when he turned 17, he came to his dad and I and asked if we would meet his recruiter because he wanted permission to go into the Marine Corps early. Well, I truly feel sorry for that recruiter because I was not very nice. Dave and I came home after that meeting and got to talking and we agreed that no matter what our kids wanted to do, we wanted them to always know that we would support them. We would love them and we would encourage them. And so we made the difficult decision to sign his papers. Um, then he wanted to be sworn in on 9-11-09. When he was sworn in, he was ecstatic. He knew, but I don't think he really knew what he was in for. He tested that he could have gone into officer's training, but he said that he never wanted to have someone next to him that had had it harder than him. So he went in weapons, infantry, the bottom of the bottom, and, and that's what he wanted. Philip grew up 
not going to church on a regular basis. We found out he was going to church every Sunday at MOS training because he wanted to know all about other religions, to know what to expect and how to get along with other Marines. So he figured if he knew their religious backings, he could more understand them. So he was going to church every Sunday just so he could find out what made other Marines tick. Approximately a year after he went in to the Marine Corps was his first deployment. He was placed with 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines. Philip had been in Afghanistan 16 days. He was on his first mission. It was an MATV in a Sangan Valley. It was a dry riverbed. From what we've been told, it was approximately a 125-pound IED that was detonated, and if you want to say it was for the Afghanistans, the Taliban, it was a perfect hit. It was in the weakest part of the vehicle. It impacted. Justin and Joseph were thrown out of the vehicle. Vic was still strapped in the vehicle. Philip was buried underneath all the rubbish. The Navy corpsman that received the call. They received a call that heaven just received four angels. And that's their call that there's no survivors. And the Navy corpsman that was on spot at that time, we asked him how long he thought it took him to get to the accident spot. And he said, well, it had to be hours because I went through two cans of chew. Well, it was 20 minutes before they were on. They were under small arms fire for two hours though, trying to retrieve Philip. Of course, they were all instantly killed, but they stayed on site and retrieved all, all four of them. That was a period of time that nine were lost in six days. Um, eventually, 25 gave their lives, and that's been the most killed in one Marine battalion since 9-11 started. Over 200 were severely wounded, with over 50% of those being, if not double, at least single, triple amputees. So the, the damage was terrible. When families say they don't want their loved one to be forgotten, I didn't want Philip to be an it or a he. He had to be Philip. He had to be Lance Corporal Philip Vintage. And so that was very, very important for me. And to this day, call him by his name, talk to him, tell me stories about him. My heart already broke. You're not going to break my heart again. I want Philip's name said. I want Philip remembered. I want any and all that serve in our military to always be remembered and honored because they deserve it. I don't think people understand the sacrifice that someone makes to be in the military. And especially now with everything going on and there being hate going on in the world, those that serve in the military, they just do it because they have a love for their country and they have a love for human beings. I miss you, I love you, I will always support you, I will always try to tell others what kind of amazing young man you were, even before you were a Marine. I'm very, very proud of you and I hope you are aware of how important you are to your dad and I.